Um, yeah, why don't we pray and then we'll start, right? Okay. Father God, we, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that uh, you are in each day. Uh, this is the day that you have made, you have created, and we choose to be glad in it, Lord. Father, we thank you that uh, we have you, Lord, with us each and every moment of every day, God. Um, Lord, just encouraging us. Um, Lord, spurring us on. And Lord, we uh, we thank you that you are uh, our paracletos, God. Paraclete, oh God, the comfort that you bring when you come alongside. Amazing God. And uh, Master, we thank you. Uh, what an awesome privilege that you consider us to be co-heirs and uh, with Christ and uh, co-laborers with you, Lord. And I thank you for this uh, great mission that each one of us is part of. And uh, Lord, we we just want to give you praise, Father God. We consider it the privilege and uh, Yes, Lord, we, uh, wherever you have placed us, Father God, that we will continue to um, do the work that you have committed, Lord, to our hands, God, that we will do it faithfully, diligently, and in doing so, God, that we will be uh, influencers, that we will be uh, salt and light, Lord, wherever you have placed us, God, we, we just want to thank you. And uh, at this time, we just want to give you praise. Um, yes, Lord, we worship you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We come at this time into your mighty hands. We pray that you would uh, you would continue to speak to us, Lord. And even as we learn these things, God, we pray that we will put into practice and uh, yes, Lord, and experience the power of uh, what you've uh, what your word stands for and what your word is, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, last class we uh, we were looking at um, sermon outline, and we looked at the sermon topic. We looked at the sermon title, and uh, the session before that we looked at the kinds of sermons. You know, we looked at three kinds of sermons, uh, the types of sermons that we can you know we can adopt, we can um, you know, we can uh, you know uh, use for uh, uh, ministering. And depending upon the audience, depending upon the occasion, you can, you know, you you can choose any one of those and um, and minister uh, effectively, right? So we last class we looked at the title, we looked at um, um, you know, when when putting together a sermon and how uh, title is important, uh, and uh, especially in today's day, in today's uh, day and time when we have social media and uh, and the prevalence of uh, you know the the kind of reach um, the message uh, has. Um, so it's it's good to have a good title. It's good to have a good visual to go along with the title. Um, of course, these are these are secondary things. Of course, the main thing is the the message itself, the content itself, right? Uh, because we can have a great title, great uh, you know visual, but if the message falls short or if it's uh, if it's not really uh, conveying what it's meant to convey. Uh, then uh, it's of no use, right? Um, so it's it's great to uh, like focus on the content, of course, uh, but these would really help us. Okay, so then we look, so we looked at the um, introduction, and we looked at the pre-introduction, and we looked at several ways you can, you know, you can start a message, you can introduce, uh, because introduction actually sets the tone for the. Uh, for that message, it uh, it really uh, brings the audience, uh, brings the congregation to a focus um, on the message, and uh, it helps uh, create an environment. Right. Um, so so it's good um, to have a good start, um, and um, uh, it answers. You know, uh, when we looked at the several things with regard to introduction, one of the things we saw was that it answers the. You know, every listener's unspoken question. You know, why should I listen to this message? Um, why should I? Why, did, why should I listen to him or her? So the introduction actually captures that, um, and uh, and you know, arouses curiosity, and uh, <clears throat> and and builds an interest in the audience right, about the message. Okay, so we also looked at the proposition. Uh, we looked at uh, two things. One is the subject and the complement of the uh, proposition: What am I talking about, and what am I saying about what I'm talking about? And then going into uh, uh, you know the main outline, and 
and the transition you know you have an interrogative sentence and this transitional sentence to to transition from from the proposition onto the outline of the sermon okay so today let's look at the sermon and uh, the uh, sermon uh, and how, how we proceed from there right so the, so this is the main um, the the main uh, or the central uh, uh, thing of the sermon um, the part of the sermon of the sermon so um from the big idea from the big uh, theme you know the proposition now we build on that and maybe we have about five things to say or six different things to say um all building up to uh, to a conclusion and uh, so these are the main points that you would want to say right so this outline that we put together which has the main points and the sub points um uh, brings uh, the the focus to the passage brings the focus to the big idea okay. so having this you know uh, of course i'm sure you would have heard several preachers um just flowing just going with the flow um maybe there are no uh, you know points that are um uh, shared or reiterated and maybe you know even in the conclusion there is no like okay here are these five points that we looked at you know a summary um maybe you know there are people who who share like that who speak like that and and of course the holy spirit ministers quite powerfully uh, in those uh, circumstances also um but the reason why uh, you know we can uh, and the advantages of having a structured outline is that it is one it helps in communicating effectively right whatever we put together uh, it helps in communicating effectively and secondly it also helps to assimilate what you're communicating you know if you are uh, you know for most people right this helps because if you're uh, sharing thing and uh, you make it um easy if you make it uh, uh, you know in simple words and you you you're dividing those three things that you're um communicating and it helps me to receive it better you know i i'm able to easily uh, receive it i'm able to you know retain that message right so it helps so that's the uh, you know, so uh, you know uh, that's the only uh, reason why we have it uh, uh, give it a different structure right and uh, we can also you know i'm sure you've heard sermons where uh, the message is entire message is an acronym right i remember at my wedding uh, you know weddings are very difficult to i mean not very difficult challenging rather to preach because uh, people will be distracted the bride and groom are distracted uh, in the sense you know you know they're just thinking about so many things people who are organizing the weddings are thinking about so many things so um you know it, it becomes a challenge to share at a wedding right so it helps to keep it uh, it helps to um you know I, so i remember the I share it in a simple manner so i remember the uh, you know the message at uh, my wedding um where the pastor uh, the one who actually shared the joke that i shared last class you know the same pastor he shared the message and uh, so it was actually four c's okay um four c c so um i remember it was uh, communicate compassion um communication um concern i think what is the fourth one now four pillars he said compassion communication concern and there was one more oh this is not good <laughs> i forgot the fourth c fourth c uh, exactly sam were you there at my wedding <laughs> commitment uh, absolutely without commitment where is you know where is the marriage where is the wedding so commitment compassion concern uh, and communication so four c's uh, thank you sam at the at um, you know at my wedding so things like this i recently uh, i think it was on saturday uh, shared a message uh, on worship and uh, you know um, so just god gave me this acronym uh, which is a c t s uh, let me just type it there a c t s 
So um, this was since it was online. Again, just felt that it would be simpler to. So I, I, I asked was uh, um, uh, to acknowledge that it was about worship, but also the fact that uh, worship is not. Just music. Worship is not just singing. So, uh, acknowledge, agree. Um, okay, so that was A, and also one more, yeah, adore. Um, so to talk about, uh, you know, the fact that you acknowledge God, you know, you recognize who God is. Psalm ninety-five talks about that, right? Where the psalmist says, um, "I will come and I will bow down," and um, and for He is our God. He says, you know, He is our God. He recognizes and acknowledges. So. Um, Acknowledge and then uh, see was confess. So, um, so we said, uh, you know, you sing it, you say it, um, sing it, shout it. Okay, you, so you confess either in the song or with words. Uh, you know, you confess so A C, and then T of course was Thanksgiving, and uh, S was surrender. You know, surrender. Uh, Sila, uh, stop and reflect. So yeah, so this is just a four-point uh, thing. So something similar, you know, something like this uh, would be the points in the outline, you know, in the message, where each point is um, distinguished or different from the other. Okay, um, there could be some commonalities, but then it's it's different, and it flows into the other and you're building up it has some continuity uh and building up to the close right so it's all, all about worship so how to engage in worship in a meaningful way so the, uh, the audience was uh, uh, it was a school um uh, audience so it was teachers the staff and also um uh, the, the principal and the and the parents Parents and I think very few students. So, parents also, and it was from people from different background, right? Uh, different worldviews. So, um, just wanted to you know, uh, you know share this. So yeah. So the thing is this. Um, so in within these, you could have uh, within the main point, you could have several sub points, if you want to, right? If you want to elaborate on it, you know, let's say. A was acknowledged, but uh, acknowledge and agree. And within that, if you want to have several sub points, you know, how do I go about acknowledging? How do I go about agreeing? You could have maybe, you know, uh, one A, one B, one C, right? Several, uh, three or more sub points. So you could go ahead and and do that. And uh, but always ensuring that uh, I mean this helps. Always ensuring that the uh, sub points contribute to the main point. Right? It's not it's not going off on a tangent, but it's contributing to the main point. Okay, elaborating the main point. Okay, so it it helps to um, communicate it well. It forms a skeleton for the message. Um, the thing is to have it uh, have the outline like a journey. It's like you start with the introduction, you you journey on. You know, it's a journey. You're building up. Uh, you're going further into the message you're going deeper into the message right you so think of a journey you know even worship it's it's good to think of it as a journey you know from the outer code to the holy of holies right um so yeah so similarly it's it's a journey that you're moving on right you're building on the previous one uh, previous point and you're journeying into um uh, the message right Okay, so the um, the thing, uh, the next thing is um, uh, have some illustrations, right? Okay, if you're uh, okay, somebody who asks a question, uh, yes, Charles, please go ahead. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much, Pastor. I'm looking at this note where it says never arrange an outline and then endeavor to make the passage fit the outline would mm. you shed more light pastor yeah so the thing is uh, you know yeah sure so if you have a you know if you have a passage it's like um, 
you know, like especially in hermeneutics, like you have the uh, you have the verse and you have some other meaning in mind, and you're trying to fit that verse into that meaning, or you you know you already decided, okay, this is what I'm going to say about this particular, and then you uh, you know about this particular scripture, which may not be true, uh, which may not be correct, and then you're trying to fit the you know scripture in, um, like we what we studied earlier in hermeneutics. So similarly, if you um, the thing is uh, that if we try to fit in that passage, you know, especially if you're doing um, let's say a, 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 a textual study and it's a study about uh, let's say we're doing a, a study on Psalm 23 and uh, well if the, if the theme is uh, you know, it's about the, it's about the shepherd and how he leads and so on. But if if you have a point, let's say, uh, for example, um, you know, what could we have? Psalm twenty three, um, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He leads me, and uh, I, I'm just thinking, um, uh, you know, something which is uh, not really flowing with the passage. Okay. Uh, and um, let me let me just take a look at Psalm 23 and see you know if there's anything that we can put in there which is outside of it and try to fit in there. Um, you know, preparing a table, surely goodness and mercy. Um, um, I don't know. You know, it, we have the six verses, but if we try to fit in something, maybe like warfare, maybe. I don't know, even warfare actually, you know, it talks about enemies and so on. So if you, you know, think of some point which is not flowing with the passage, right? Um, so that is what it is. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to really think of anything that might be totally uh, out of this. Um, so, and yet, you know, uh, it's not too far away. I'm just trying to think of uh, something. Um, so uh, it's just that, right? So where we try to fit in the outline into the passage, you know, you, you thought maybe, hey, this is a good idea. And then you try to fit in here. Um, then it seems contrived. It seems very, uh, you know, very manipulated or artificial um, and doesn't go. So that's the, that's the whole thing, right? Uh, so especially when it comes to a textual sum. Does that help, Charles? Yes, it does, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at illustrations. You know, what does it mean to illustrate? Anyone? Can you say illustrate? Um, what does it mean? Illustrate something uh, in common language. Um, though I appreciate to say if we sin, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, Sam, yeah. I guess you could use that, something like that. Hmm. Right. Someone, someone asked a question. Someone put their hand, their hand up. Say, you have a question. No, no question. No question. No. Okay. I thought somebody put their hand up. Okay. Right. Okay. So what does it mean to... Okay. Was it Isaac? Okay. Go ahead, Isaac. No, no, it's a, it's a mistake, sir. Oh, I see. Okay. No worries. Okay. So, to, so yeah. So to illustrate in common language, it, it just means to yeah, draw. To illustrate something like clarifying yeah. by giving... Giving an example. Um, I'm sorry, it wasn't very clear, Charles. Yeah, so in in um, in Can simple language. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Anita. Uh, illustration should be something where the example has been demo demonstrated so that we can understand better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just asking, you know, like, what does the word illustrate mean, actually, in simple language? Like uh, Sam has mentioned, yes. To illustrate means to draw. 
okay to illustrate actually means to draw something and uh, what we are actually doing is when we are sharing these main points or the sub points um to to draw something to make it clearer okay to present a picture in order to make those points uh, clearer um to help the audience understand it better you know for example when you say um um faith without works is dead and you make that statement and uh, when you go on to illustrate it by saying okay you know you have faith in god um but you know do you step out and uh, show it through your works through your action um uh, because without that action your faith is dead as the spirit without the body is dead uh, in fact that itself is an illustration if you look at that word uh, that verse in james um you know james when he's saying uh, as the spirit without the body is dead so faith without works is dead also you know, so he's actually drawing a parallel between you know the spirit leaving the body and you know a human being is dead so um so that itself is an illustration right? that it itself is a picture uh, but if you want to go on to explain it further we we draw a picture uh, we we give an example uh, maybe uh, you know maybe it can be from uh, the the scripture itself it can be a story it can be uh, a, a, an incident it can be a personal experience uh, something that so that makes it come alive that explains the truth right so that it stays right um so yeah uh, uh, in the notes i'm on uh, 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 page 32 i'm in page 32 so it's a means of throwing light illuminate something uh, by using an example okay so it really helps things come alive uh, but we need to know where when uh, and uh, how to use that right so it really helps it's a very very useful tool but um we need to be careful about using it again you know just like humor um in the as an introduction so you just need to be careful where you're using it so it it helps to uh, you know when we use it to explain to clarify um to to really impress uh, the truth in our hearts right um so um so the thing is uh, i i remember this particular illustration it wasn't actually it was an activity right so this was at again at a youth camp where this pastor who uh, you know who shared at our wedding and who shared that joke in the introduction uh, in fact i went back and told him like pastor i remember only that joke about the message uh, i don't remember the message at all uh, later you know after many years um so so he actually uh, you know had an activity to illustrate something right so um, the activity was very simple you know how do you choose your team right and why do you choose the people so uh, so he was talking about uh, you know people if you know if you need to do some physical work if you want to, there's a physical challenge you know you need to remove a stone or carry something who would you choose so obviously people went and you know chose the strongest the tallest the biggest and and then you know he was talking about you know, if you want to share your burdens or you share your deepest hurts or problems um who would you choose would you choose the same person then uh, he found out that the team you know had completely changed right people did not choose the same person They're very I, i think it was com- it was completely no one ever chose the person they chose earlier it was it was someone else because someone else someone who would listen someone who would understand and so on so so he was uh, he, he was talking about how you know we uh, we how we uh, uh, when we when it need, when it, when we want to confide in someone when we want to uh, share with someone you know we choose people who would listen who would understand so he did it he shared this example it, it, it was like an activity and it stayed with us right Uh, stayed with us and the truth was you know, to be that kind of person uh, he was just re- uh, he was just stating that to be that kind of person for others and also to to look out for that kind of a person in order to you know confide in you know someone mature understanding caring uh, someone who would you know keep things private and so on so uh, just to share that point right 
So um, it helps us. It retains. It stays with me even after all these years. I don't know how many years it was. Uh, probably sometime in ninety, uh, sometime in the nineties. You know. Uh, so it's stayed with me all these years, uh, and. Yeah, so that's what a good illustration does, right? a good activity. Okay, so it, it helps our memory, it helps stir emotion and hold attention. So that also, you know, it, it stirs up our emotion. We are emotional beings and we relate to things emotionally. Um, and, um, and this particular, I just want to share this, this particular uh, preacher, uh, he shared his... Uh, life experience in order to share about how good God is and how faithful God is. And also the important lesson was to be faithful, to stay faithful uh, and to believe God, to stay faithful, to, to believe God, to take God at his word. Okay. So, uh, so this was the thing, you know, he, he the, this particular preacher, he came from a non-Christian background and he shared that the day he accepted the Lord, and uh, this, this was in Germany, his whole fa family, you know, um, uh, uh, yeah, he was in Germany, sorry. He was in Germany the day he accepted the Lord. His wife, he came to know uh, uh, later that his wife um, became mentally disturbed, you know, not because it was too, deep, too you know, not connected things. Um, he just came to know that you know, he accepted the Lord. And in the evening or uh, the next day, he's talking to the family uh, over a phone call. He finds that he's depressed and uh, some kind of a mental illness or some symptoms uh, is not responding to people and in their own world kind of thing. So then he takes her back, you know, the next trip and then they have a child. And so they all, you know, he needs to work in Germany uh, for some time. So he's from India, goes to Germany. It's only him, his wife, and his son. Son is an infant. The wife has the same condition. So he would just, you know, uh, he said he would just dedicate or, um, you know, commit his wife and the little one to the Lord before leaving home and say, Lord, you take care. I trust in you uh, because she was mentally unstable at that point. So he would come back from work and the son would be rolling somewhere on the carpet, somewhere on the floor, crying. Uh, the wife will be sitting, you know, staring into a vacant space, um, sometimes just lifting her hands like that and not responding to him. And, and you know, he would wash the baby, wash the child, feed the baby because he wouldn't know whether the baby has been fed during the day. So went through some difficult times, right? So he said that he was in a time of you know great need at that time you know he needed the needed to hear from god and god spoke to him through through a verse and um, and and that verse was so reassuring that he held on to that verse and um, and that word talks about you know after you suffer, suffer a while i will establish and strengthen and settle you right so he just held on to that verse held on to that um, truth and he said he never complained to god again he never went back to God and said, God, why why is this? Because God had already spoken. He said he will rectify the situation. So he just completely believed God and held on to that truth and declared that truth um, and stayed with it. Right? And then he asks, you know, and then he tells that, uh, you know, I'm sure you must be thinking, you know, after a while, how long that after a while uh, was. So and then he goes on to say it was 11 years. Okay, so 11 years, he says, he never once complained to God. He never went, went back and questioned God because God had already spoken and God had already given the answer, right? And uh, so he was so reassured. Every time we felt the temptation to question or, you know, uh, even the thought co uh, crossed his mind, he would be reminded of this promise and he would say, God, you've already spoken, you've already promised, so I will stay. Okay. So it was uh, uh, something from his um, life. And now, you know, when I heard it for the first time, I was completely, uh, you know, completely, uh, what's the word, 
Uh, it's completely wasted, you know, if you want to use that word, completely, you know, I was just in tears, completely broken. Because I had complained, you know, time and again to God over trivial things. What is the weather? Why is the weather like this? Oh, this food is not tasty. I had complained to God several, several things. And when I heard this, I was so inspired and at the same time so broken that um, that here's a man who has gone through so much and he never complained in 11 years, right? Uh, because God had spoken, right? Emotionally, it stirred up something in me, right? So uh, an illustration right, and a personal testimony stirs up emotion for the better, right? Stirs up emotion for the better, not to, um, not to you know, acts of rebellion or whatever, but stirs up emotion to, uh, to draw close to God. Right. And and also stirs up faith. Right. So this was about enduring and going through, journeying on. Right. Um, so this was something that stayed again, stayed with me. And I think it's it's more than I don't know, twenty five years or so since I've heard this message, but I've never forgot it uh, since I heard this uh, illustration. This was the first time I heard the speaker uh, speak. Uh, and uh, and you know it stayed with me ever since. And so things like this, illustrations are powerful uh, when we know you know how to use it. Okay. Also, one ex one good thing about illustrations is that it helps to present the truth without uh, you know it, it refreshes the hearer. Right? Everyone loves a good story. Everyone loves a good illustration. Everyone loves uh, to listen to you know uh, and to be inspired by these things um, or you know uh, maybe it's just a good story everyone loves it i remember you know uh, in a in, in one of the short term bible colleges um, especially these post lunch sessions are very very you know uh, very very challenging right everybody's dozing off and, uh, and the weather is also not contributing it's just, you know kind of hot and uh, humid in some of the places and, uh, and everybody just you know dozing nodding off so uh, I remember, you know, every time there was an illustration, the eyes will be open, right? Uh, the audience, everybody would be interested. They lean forward and the eyes will be open. They listen very intently. And once we get back to the, you know, and then that would last some time, right? And when we, when we again, you know, uh, in the uh, grappling with, you know, the content and, and, and then slowly, you know, you can see the, Again, the tiredness uh, set in and people, because they were not used to, you know, sitting and listening for many hours. Uh, they were used to working in the fields. That, and so they were not used to sitting and listening like this. So anyway, so we saw that firsthand that when, when an illustration is used, when an example is used to explain something, explain a deep truth, um, and, you know, much like how Jesus used a parable, it, it really... Uh, helps convey the truth, plus it refreshes the listener, right? It does not weary the listener, the one who is listening. So, yeah, it should make sense to the audience, the kind of illustration. It should connect with them, uh, connect with their world or what they are used to. Um, so then it will really help. It should be appropriate to the theme of the sermon, of course. Uh, illustration should be convincing. You know, it should it should be authentic. If you just making up something, then it, it won't be, it will not be. Right? It, it should be authentic. It should be convincing. Okay, um, and even those who are disinterested uh, would listen to the illustration and be drawn into the message. And you know, I remember uh, again at one of the short-term Bible colleges. You know, there was this boy who would who would just not. He was just not interested. I don't know why he came, and probably somebody enrolled him. Probably his parents enrolled him. Uh, so he was there for those, uh, you know, weeks, whatever. Um, I think two and a half months. So it's about ten weeks, and uh, I was there for one week. And he would, he was just not there. You know, and the difference was, was very, you know, very very um, very stark because every time we had a break, he would come alive. <laughs> you know, every time we said, okay, uh, break time, football. He was, he was, you know, he was, he was completely alive. It was a different person whom we saw. So anyway, so even him, you know, even this person, 
uh, was drawn by the illustrations. He would listen to these illustrations, right? So people who are totally disinterested would, this here's an opportunity to draw them back into the message because the message that um, you're sharing would be, maybe it would change destinies. Maybe it's about life and death. Maybe it's about something that they are going through, but, um, uh, you know, because of various things and they're distracted and, and an illustration would help draw them back in, right? Um, so uh, sources of illustration, yes, of course, uh, the word of God, it, you know, the Bible itself is a good place for illust a good source of illustrations, right? We have so many instances, right, in the Old Testament, in the New. Um, so you could use that as a, and these are safe, right? Because you know that, you know, these are, it's, these are, uh, it is, it is scripture, it has happened, and you can, um, you can share that, right? And you can also share from personal experience and, uh, uh, but be just be careful um, when you're using personal experiences because it was your experience and uh, you know you you just you know explain it you know if god can work in different ways god god can god will so you just need to share that right so especially you know for me uh, when i'm sharing my testimony and my struggle with certain issues um, like pornography and all that you know i decided when i came out of it that um, you know that I would change my newspaper subscription, right? Because I I changed to another paper which had less visuals, less visuals of you know film stars or celebrities, and so uh, it's a, it was a decision. I decided that I will not, yeah, you know, um, uh, go or check email or, or check anything on the internet alone. That it will always be with another person, whether my my wife or you know in the presence of family. So these are some things that you know I I decided because I felt God was leading me on that. Because things were so serious uh, for me that I I had to deal with it that way, right? But I wouldn't advocate that for others. You know, saying okay, don't have cable TV at home or don't you know you need to change your newspaper. Well, because they need to, you know, this is my uh, thing that God led me to do that. So I don't want to teach that as a doctrine, right? These are helpful things. If you want to, you can. Right? So when you're using personal examples, um, make that distinction, right? Um, so that would help. Okay. Don't exaggerate, manufacture, or brag about some things. Okay. Do not repeat the same illustrations before the same audience. Now, this is a difficult one, especially, you know, I, I think you've heard me say, you know, I don't know if I've shared before because... When you're teaching three classes and, uh, you know, over a period of, you know, uh, a number of years, you forget where you've used what. And so uh, maybe you've heard some of these illustrations before and you've been patient about it. Uh, thank you. But uh, the thing is, you know, uh, uh, it's it's good to uh, make a note of it and say, okay, uh, have I used this in the same audience? You know, uh, especially if it's, uh, if it's a church and, uh, well, and if you're pastoring a church and uh, if you go back to that same illustration and uh, you can see it in the faces, people are like, oh, pastor, you told this before, this story, you've heard it a hundred times, uh, one more time, you know. Uh, so, yeah, so you just uh, make a note of it. Try to collect files. This is a very good, you know, uh, try to collect uh, file illustrations, write down illustrations, you know, especially uh, that poem that I shared earlier. In the last session, you know, I I made a mental note of it, and I also, you know, I keep it, um, and I've and I've used it also um, in messages, especially with regard to the word pertaining to the word of God when we're sharing something, um, and I used it as an introduction or as a conclusion. You know, I've used it in a couple of occasions, so um, it's good to you have these. Uh, you know, have these illustrations. You you file it as your. You know, maybe you've prepared an outline and you've stored it the same way. To think of you know illustrations and uh, um, and do that. And then the funny thing is, you know, when uh, sometimes we uh, maybe I'm just driving and I'm, my daughter's sitting next to me, and then uh, and then you know the the traffic light changes. And uh, and we, or, the, or the traffic light is just just red, and I'm you know I'm just going through because the vehicle in front is also moving, I'm also moving, and then suddenly realize oh I'm in the middle of the you know the traffic island, and then 
the signal is actually red. And, you know, I looked at my daughter, daughter and said, um, you know, and the knowing expression and she's, she says, no, that no, you know, because it's like a, it's like a life lesson. It's like a sermon, you know, an illustration there. And she's like, no, 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 not this time. You know, don't start now. <laughs> like, um, uh, you know, messages like don't follow the crowd unless they are following Jesus uh, or imitate uh, you know, imitate others as long as they're imitating Christ. Things like that just come, you know, when you uh, when you live through those illustrations, right? So, um, yeah, so it's good to help, uh, I mean, uh, collect these things and make a mental note of it and uh, and file it away so you can you can use it, right? It, it because it it's uh, it's very helpful. Okay, um, here are some things that AP you know Alfred B. Gibbs, a theologian preacher. So he uh, he quotes from uh, about Henry Ward Beecher. Henry Ward Beecher, interesting person, uh, an abol abolitionist um, uh, who uh, from the who was in the, in the in America, and we get an opportunity to just read about him. Um, so he was there. He helped in the Civil War and all that. So anyway, so he uh, he quotes this person. Gibbs quotes this person about illustrations. So illustrations help with the argument. They help the hearer to remember. They stimulate the ima imagination, right? Um, and uh, especially when you when you're sharing a story. Um, you know, the first time I'm, I'm sure you've heard the story of Joseph. You've heard the story of uh, you know Joseph and in the Pharaoh's court and and uh, the things that he did and, and being in prison and all that. I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's as human beings, we visualize it, right? We, we, uh, it, it's there in our ima imagination and it's, it comes alive to us, right? So they stimulate the imagination. It helps rest the audience. Uh, and uh, it also provides for, you know, various classes of hearers, right? So if you're uh, maybe a young person, maybe a, a you know a child, maybe a senior person. So you use the right illustration. It helps connect and uh, um, helps co communicate the truth for you know however different the audience is. It also helps bridge difficult places. And you know if it's a if it's a difficult concept to grasp, it's a difficult, it's a complex thing. An illustration always helps, right? Um, or maybe it's an admonition, you know, you are uh, re ad admonishing or bringing in correction, and it's something that um, that you're doing it, and you you know you have to do it publicly. Uh, it helps, you know, bridge that as well. They enforce the truth, of course, right? Uh, but the thing is that if we use too many illustrations, then it becomes a storytelling time you know and people uh maybe they it's it's like some great ads you know some some great commercials or advertisements that you see on tv very creative and i remember because we recently were watching this test cricket between in india and england and some, some very creative ads you remember the ad but you forget the product you know i don't know if you've had that experience, you know, advertisement is, wow, brilliant ad. But what was the product? What is the name of the product? What is the product even? You don't remember that. Right? But actually that ad is, that advertisement is meant to, you know, uh, for you to recall the product when you go to buy, when you make a purchase decision, right? Maybe it's a deal or something. And, and when, when you want to buy it, when you walk into a store, it's meant to trigger that recall, product recall, right? But, uh, well, sometimes, you know, <laughs> and we might use the illustrations that way. We talk about the illustrations, we use the illustrations. These are good illustrations, but they steal the actual content away, right? So, so the thing is to make sure uh, we use it in the right way. We use it um, appropriately or sparingly so that it communicates. And so not every point or every uh, sub point needs an illustration. Right? So you choose, you decide. Okay, this is something that God is really emphasizing. Um, and this is you know, something difficult to grasp. I need to illustrate it. You make that choice. You make that decision. You know, this, would be, this would really help if it's an illustration. And also the time for the illustration. Right. Maybe it's something that you need to just mention, you know, in a few seconds, 
and you're done with it, it's helpful, it's effective, right? Um, and and then you just move on. Okay, right. I think, yeah, that's about time we um, have. Um, okay, so the other thing, uh, you know, um, we can probably, um, you know, uh, it, when it comes to presentation, we'll talk about it, but, um, you know, you will find these TED Talks really, um, really useful to present it in a forceful manner. I don't know if you've, um, you know, how many of you have seen those videos? They're on YouTube, um, you know, TED Talks. Um, I just want to say this is a secular thing. So they talk about different things. They talk about things that are totally unbiblical, unscriptural as well. So just wanted to give you that disclaimer. Uh, so you know what you're, you know, uh, if you want to, uh, you have that in mind, so you can be discerning. Um, but it's some some great practical stuff, and the way uh, they present it, it's very powerful. The the organization, how they prepare the speaker, is also you know very good. It's it's all done in maybe at the most ten minutes, fifteen minutes, um, uh, but then it's very very powerful. It's very very uh, precise. And uh, the good use of visuals and everything, so it's it's communicated well, right? So uh, you know you could take a look at some of those videos and learn from them. But I will also, um, you know, we will also watch uh, some uh, videos together and also talk about it. Uh, probably we'll do it once we finish the mechanics of sermon preparation, right? Okay, so we'll stop here and have a great day. Uh, we'll catch up again on Friday. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye.